Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Um, welcome to Spatial Spotlights. Uh, my name is Ava Adler and I'm a solutions en engineer here at Cardo. Um, I believe uh, I'm waiting for Helen, our fabulous uh, marketing geospatial guru. Um, so I'm gonna have her make sure that she can hear me and see me. Um, it's just to make sure everything is set up right. Welcome. Okay, all good, great. I'm glad we got the confirmation. Uh, well, welcome, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Um, again, my name is Ava, I'm a solutions engineer here at Cardo, and I'm here to talk to you today about geomarketing, um, which is a use case we see here, uh, here at Cardo. And essentially what I mean by geomarketing is uh, we see marketing teams, CEOs, entrepreneurs coming to us and saying, hey, um, I wanna better understand my, my customer and how can I better connect with my customer? So that can mean, hey, I, uh, a company has a product or service and uh, they know that there's a real need for it and it can solve people's pain points. Um, how can I better market and connect with them? And um, the main ch challenge or problem we see uh, um, a lot of companies facing is um, you only have a limited marketing budget. You want to make sure you get a return on investment and you are uh, leveraging that marketing budget and also uh, making sure your marketing materials are hitting the right customers and also um, potential customers as well. Um, and then, you know, you might be asking, well, why does this matter? Why is this topic important? Um, and um, as you may all know, uh, customer preferences and um, behaviors are changing all the time. Uh, oh, one second. Let me make sure. Okay, technically we're good. Okay, just wanna make sure. Um, so again, why does this matter? Um, so essentially at the end of the day, consumers, you and I, our preferences and behaviors change all the time, right? As uh, larger macroeconomics and other things evolve and change, um, so do our preferences. So for companies to be able to keep up with that speed of those changes is really important because it's uh, an ability, um, it could be an opportunity to have or miss out on revenue, miss out on growth to build your product or service to connect with more in scale. Um, so at the end of the day, um, geomarketing is really important to connect to your customer and understand your customer and um, provide value in that way. Um, so today, um, before I dive right into it, um, there's different ways to do this. Um, so there's qualitative and quantitative approaches. Um, and you know that involves surveys, interviews um, to understand your customer market research. So whether that's creating a UX persona, um, creating a customer avatar to kind of understand, paint a picture of your customer. Um, what, today we're gonna focus more on the quantitative approach and um, depending on your research question or your business question of what you're trying to get out of the data, um, each approach is amazing for each one. Um, so today we're gonna focus more on the business question of hey, where do I place marketing um, in relation to consumer behaviors? Um, because I need to see behaviors have changed and maybe um, places where I would put an ad um, maybe isn't where I need to market. So the use case and um, example I'm gonna bring forth today um, is looking at an e-commerce company that sells sport, sport events attire, um, athleisure, and other athletic fitness wear. Um, so definitely this company realizes that the projection of the market is ex estimated to grow 30% by 2030. So it's really important to find those customers that's really trending, especially fitness, just as a longevity health benefit, um, but also that it is um, a, a popular trending thing to wear athleisure wear. Um, and I'm also doing that today um, on brand with what we're talking about. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and dive in. Let me share my screen and how we would approach this type of analysis. So um, I'm sharing my screen right now. Uh, right now I am in Cardo map dashboarding tool called Builder. Um, before we get into this, um, or before I kind of show you the analysis and the way that we've approached it and asked for this uh, business's question, um, I wanna cover kind of the data sets that I used to look at this. So today we're gonna focus on an area of interest will be New York City. Of course, you could do this analysis in any location anywhere in the world. Um, and what I'm going to be pulling are different data sets to understand consumer spatial patterns and behaviors. So one that is really interesting um, is looking at consumer foot traffic. So right now, um, thanks to our Carter Data Observatory, uh, we're pulling in data from amazing data partners that have global reach, including developed and emerging markets. Um, definitely check that out. Um, 
But right now I'm looking at uh, consumer foot traffic into retail stores in this area. Um, there's other great providers that look at mobility, including, um, you know, cycling um, as well as car traffic. But for this analysis, I kind of, I want to understand where can I place my marketing, where people are actually going um, and walking. Um, specifically for New York, everyone walks around. So I'm pulling this data set, um, which you can find in our data observatory. I'm going to change my tab and right here, and there's a really great summary. You can understand the data and um, other variables as well. I'm going to shift back to my map. Another data set I'm going to pull in, uh, which are two, which is to also help us understand consumer behavior in terms of not just, you know, in a survey, someone may say, hey, yes, I like to spend my money on sportswear and athleisure. I wanna know that they're actually, they're, the behaviors that they're taking action does hold more weight sometimes than what we say we do. Um, so I'm pulling in two different data sets from our data observatory, including AGS's consumer spend data. So that looks at average household spend on different consumer products um, per year. And so, um, I'm able to pull in how much are women and men spending on sportswear? Um, how much are people spending on other different consumer products? So I think this is a really good indicator of how much people are spending on that attire because as a business, in this case, um, I'm selling that type of product. So I wanna be able to, to um, find customers that are spending that money currently on that. Um, I'm gonna shift my tab to our data set here. Um, so looking at consumer spend and there's a lot of really great attributes and different consumer spend. Um, AGS also has a five-year projection, which is great. I know we were talking about understanding trends and um, how that might change. So, um, you know, you could do this analysis two ways, one with uh, current consumer spend on sportswear, and then you could also do it a five-year projection uh, just so you can try and find locations to market your, your products and services um, based on both. Um, I think that temporal aspect is really important. Um, and then another aspect or another data set, um, these are both block group admins, so I, I join them together. Um, we're also looking at um, spatial AI, which is another great behavioral data set scraping from all the social media uh, platforms. And um, you're able to create, they create 72 geo segments, which essentially um, you're able to identify these behaviors of what people are sharing and, and engaging with. Um, so a lot of these topics include, let me change my tab. Um, so like I said, they scrape from social media feed. It's how people are actually behaving rather than how they're identifying. Um, so there's really great um, categories like coffee connoisseurs, um, dog lovers and such. And so I'm pulling in this data set, going back to my map, um, specifically for those fitness related behaviors. I want people, I want to find people, um, that are maybe discount affinity. So if I have a marketing advertisement on a discount or a new line of product, they're more likely to act on that type of sale, um, advertisement, um, behaviors like fitness, fashion, like people that prefer to engage and wear fitness clothes as a fashion statement, which is definitely a trend right now and also people that are engaged to organize or partake in organized sports. So these are just um, different attributes. I wanna kind of lay the groundwork for how I wanna engage in this type of analysis to understand my ideal customers and what and how they're acting and how I can connect and place my marketing. Um, so from here now, I, we've looked at the data sets. I'm gonna hop over into our Carta workflows tool, which essentially right here is a way to build um, through drag and drop methods, create multi-step spatial analyses pipelines. So I can schedule them and I can automate it. And it's really great, um, especially if you're in a team, um, being able to be transparent about your methods and also get feedback from other team members. People can duplicate it, build off of it, um, tweak it and such. So uh, this is a really great tool. I'm gonna walk through how I did my analysis here and then how uh, that looks like in our visual map and then how we're able to hone down specifically on the high priority areas that are best relevant for me to market um, the products and services that I have as an e-commerce company for sportswear. Uh, so you can see here at the far left are our input tables, which I showed you earlier in the builder map. So here we have our uh, foot traffic mobility patterns, understanding where people are in, in this given area of New York City. We also have our two uh, behavioral data sets, right? Consumer spend on athletic wear, and then also um, behavioral attributes of sports fans. So people that are attending sporting events, hence they uh, will be buying athletic and sportswear. And then the very last data set that I also brought in was uh, looking at digital advertising panels. So let's say in this case, I wanna focus on 
bigger scale marketing initiatives with a bigger budget, you could also bring in anything else. Like if you want to bring in gym locations, coffee shops to print flyers, you know, there's a lot of different ways you could do it. Um, but we'll go with this example. And essentially what I did my first step here, once I have my inputs, uh, the first step I wanted to take advantage of, of was creating these walk ISO lines from these digital uh, media panels. So if I go back to my builder map, I'll show you what that looks like. So these are for New York City, these are the digital um, out of home advertisement panels. Um, and what I did was I created a five minute walk time. So under the assumption that if you're a five minute walk away from this panel, it's pretty large, you'll be able to see it. Um, and this is what that result looks like. If I pan back to the workflow, that's what that result looks like that we were just looking at together. And then a moment ago, um, when I was showing the different inputs and data sets, this is joining these two together. These are both on a census block group level. So you can join those two geographies together um, and essentially creating a longer table with all the different attributes. So that's what we're doing here at this step. And then from there, I'm saying, hey, I want to enrich this walk time analysis with my consumer spend data. So if I go back to my builder map, what that looks like is this result. So we have our out of home panels and then we also have these um, these uh, five minute walk enriched areas. And I'm gonna hop back over to my workflow. And then we're gonna do that again, because we not only wanna understand the behavior of potential customers, but I wanna also understand where they actually are um, as well as spend and how they're behaving. So then what I do is I enrich that uh, walk time that we just looked at a moment ago, again, with uh, foot traffic. And then uh, what you could do, another option is you could create a composite score to essentially have a machine learning model under the hood, say, um, and run some statistics saying which areas have the highest score, almost like a, a, a hotspot analysis, a heat map that you could create and then create, make quick decisions from there. But in this case, I'll pan back to our builder map. Um, I did a, a similar but different approach. Um, but, and then lastly, you can save the table as an output and then bring this into Builder uh, to visualize and also do some exploratory analysis. And so what I mean by, um, I took a different approach is that I wanted to be able to explore the different variables and indicators. Sometimes it's really helpful, or for me, like I really like to be able to explore and understand the data first um, so that I have a comprehensive understanding of it. So what I'm gonna do here is if I can zoom out, so we have our input tables we saw, and this is the end result from our workflows um, output, which is really great with the drag and drop. Um, I'm newer to SQL, so definitely that tool is really helpful to be able to onboard and learn this process really quickly. Um, and what we can see here, if I zoom out, you can see on the right, we have these widgets. So they're really kind of that great dashboarding tool to be able to understand and interact with data on the fly. Um, so overall, this is a really good market to be involved in part of. You can see here um, within this viewport, um, New York City sporting event spend is nearly three quarters of a million. So that's a lot of potential revenue of customers that I could target. Um, you can see here um, taking the total of uh, sporting spend five minutes around these marketing areas covers over 100,000 potential spend so they could be targeted and funneled to, uh, let's say, the, my e-commerce business. And let's say I want to focus on um, a certain type of customer that's spending more than $600 per year on sporting event spend. So we can assume that if someone's spending more than $600, they're, oops, let me drag one more time. We can assume that they're spending either a lot on nosebleed seats for one big important game, or they're maybe, a big fan and they like to sit in the back row and they're going to multiple per year. Um, so now I've filtered it and now the map interface has adjusted. And we can see here already the, what I talked about earlier that uh, spatial AI data set, the behavioral um, data set is scored one to a hundred. So essentially what that means is um, it is based on a percentile across the nation. So if you have a score that is higher, like 90, closer to 100, that means you have higher percent confidence that the person is actually behaving uh, more uh, with that behavior rather than other areas of the United States, which is where our data set is. So we can see here right uh, right now that about on average, six, they're uh, placed around 60 out of 100, uh, which means that there's a lot of uh, discount affinity and uh, behaviors near ads in, in the New York City area. So that's really interesting. 
So I want to also capitalize on that. And let's say I'm looking for an advertisement um, or I want to start a campaign that focuses on a discount or a sale that I'm offering soon at the end of the summer season and maybe starting to the fall season. So let's go ahead and select um, people that have a higher discount affinity. So I want higher confidence that people walking by these ads are more likely to act on that ad and hop on the sale, right? And so we can see here now, I continue to scroll down. Now we can look at our unique visitors or their foot traffic and being able to filter by that. And there's a lot of different ways you could slice and dice the data. You could say, hey, I wanna focus on people that are walking really quickly through this area. Um, but in this case, I'm really curious. I wanna focus on people that are there for longer dwell times that are um, able to see my ad. Cause I think with this, the statistic right is you have to see an ad 13 times or so for it to like register in your brain. So let's say that I want to have people that are able to see this ad for longer periods of time. And once I do that, you can already see here that it really refines down my results from, you know, starting with a large number of potential options for my marketing campaign. And now it's marketed down to like top um, five or so. And we can see here what's really interesting is as a sportswear company, I would assume I'd place my ad near gyms or near stadium. But you can see here all of the results of this analysis are actually further away from the stadiums and are closer um, towards where people are working. Um, so maybe people that have corporate office jobs, um, people that maybe are spending longer dwell times. Um, and you can see here too, a lot of these areas that are result have high fitness behaviors, um, higher sport, higher sports spend, and um, you know are traveling further distances to these areas. So um, most likely are working or are doing other things. Um, rather than other areas and do have high um, foot traffic as well. Uh, so yeah, so that is our analysis. And so then now um, I'm able to identify where my customers are. I kind of understand my customers and where I want to place marketing campaigns and ads um, and understanding the spatial relationship that they have um, in this area. So that's um, how we did our analysis. And uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Really appreciate the opportunity to talk to you guys about this. If you have any questions, please engage a comment um, on our uh, card LinkedIn. And um, yeah, thank you so much for being here and have a wonderful evening, afternoon, morning, wherever uh, time zone you're located. So.